So this is going to begin a series of uh, videos. Uh, the overall arching title is a, The Path to Durable Complete Remission. And in this I'm going to try and talk about what I see as the tools we have to get a complete remission and then hold the patient in remission without uh, uh, continuing toxic treatment. And so today, uh, the tool is going to be metformin. Uh, and this is a, a really amazing story. The uh, drug was approved for diabetes in 1958. Uh, when I graduated from medical school in 1969, it was already an old drug. And now here I am, 71 years old, and new things are being discovered about a drug. Uh, it's a very interesting story about medicine and perceptions. So what it appears is that metformin uh, reduces the risk of dying of most cancers of adult life. Uh, if you want to get a good sense of this, uh, as a lay person, the best place is to go to www.scholar.google.com. Google Scholar. Put in metformin and then any other cancer you can think of. Odds are high you're going to find metformin as a hot research and clinical topic for whatever cancer you put in. Uh, so clearly this is a story that goes to the heart of what's involved in malignant transformation. Well, it's even more bizarre than that. Uh, you know, this all came about because diabetics and metformin had a reduction in cancer death rates. Well, they have a reduction in overall mortality. So heart attacks and strokes, uh, the deaths from heart attacks and strokes are significantly lower on metformin. And the metformin just lowers the blood sugar, doesn't treat the cholesterol or blood pressure, so it's very interesting. So what's behind this? Well, in the laboratory, if you take an animal and tie off a coronary artery or block an artery to the brain, the animals that are on metformin lose a lot less brain or heart tissue to this. So here we have a drug that is striking at a very fundamental aspect of biology, affecting many disease processes. Now, very interesting story. Uh, of course, I think it's still an evolving story. You know, science sometimes involves by brilliant step after brilliant step, and sometimes you're walking along the beach and you find a diamond. And you're very glad you found the diamond, but then you think, how the hell did it get there, and where are there more diamonds? So this is where I are with the metformin. Well, you know, calorie restriction also slows most cancers and protects the heart and brain. And it turns out that metformin and calorie restriction overlap in a key biochemical step. <clears throat> so just think about uh, humans or other animals in the wild. Sometimes food is available, sometimes it's not. So there needs to be a system in place uh, to sense if food's available or not and turn our metabolism or, or up or down. And so the energy coinage of a cell is ATP. And when it's burned up, it's ANP. And so there's this protein, AMP, dependent kinase that turns on when it AMP goes up. So when you're using more energy than you can generate, this protein goes up and shuts metabolism down. Um, and normal tissues tolerate this well and cancer doesn't. And this is why the broad anti-cancer effect and the heart and brain positive effects. So it duplicates some of the benefits of calorie restriction without calorie restricting. Uh, I think it's a bit more than that honestly. Um, so how does this play out again prostate cancer? Well, uh, of course everyone knows testosterone is important and testosterone res resistance to te moving testosterone is, is uh, dangerous or unpleasant and uh, not desired. Um, well, there's a pathway that enables survival of the cancer during hormonal therapy that is activated in some men with prostate cancer. And that's not a good thing. 
The protein involved in this is called P10, P-T-E-N. And this normally puts a break on the survival pathway. And if P10 is there the way it should be normally, hormone resistance is much more difficult to develop. Unfortunately, uh, many men with prostate cancer, particularly aggressive prostate cancer, have lost P10. And the brakes are off, and the survival pathway goes up, and the cancer can survive to become hormone resistant. In the laboratory, if you block this alternate pathway, it's almost impossible to get hormone resistance because the cells can't tolerate it. Well, because of what metformin does, it shuts down this alternate pathway. It is selectively toxic to cancer cells that have lost P10. The very in, in mutation that enables hormone resistance is attacked uh, by metformin. Fascinating biology. So there's a strong argument to use metformin freely uh, in patients starting hormonal therapy from that basis. Then we have a randomized control trial that shows that a Lupron versus Lupron plus metformin that shows that metformin prevents the weight gain and many other bad things that happen with hormonal therapy. Uh, and finally, there's a Swiss phase two clinical trial where a group of men had hormone refractory metastatic prostate cancer. Basically, chemotherapy was all that was left. And these weren't diabetics. And they gave routine diabetic doses of metformin and it uh, metformin put a lid on the cancer uh, in a sizable proportion of the patients. And there were no serious side effects. So, uh, certainly if you're going on hormonal therapy, going on metformin is going to diminish the <clears throat> danger of the treatment to your health and may well uh, in, make it more difficult for the cancer to become resistant to hormonal therapy. Uh, my gut tells me metformin is going to be a big part of any program that attains that is used to develop durable complete remissions. Enjoy.